Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers, and today I'm doing a beginner's tutorial on masking, but not your normal masking. Masking is usually done with black and white, but I want to show you that you don't need to just use black and white, and sometimes shades of gray can come in handy. So let's get started. So I pulled in two stock photos from Unsplash, and I have the links to them in the description below. And the first one is this street scene, and the second one is this woman here. So what I did was I actually cut out the woman to save time, because that would be a different tutorial, and I actually rasterized her, because all I need her to be is just herself. So let me hide my originals here. I'll bring this up. And then this is the woman. And she's a little bit too sharp compared to this, so I can really just maybe slightly go to hue and saturation and maybe cut down her saturation just a touch like that. So her oranges kind of blend in, so I like that. And I'm going to actually rasterize that again because I just want just her by herself. So when you mask something, let's start with just this. When you mask something, if you do black, let's create a mask, right? If you paint in black or white, so here, here's a mask. So now if I'm painting in black, everything disappears. And if I switch it to white, everything reappears. And it's completely solid, so it goes completely from disappear to reappear. But you can also use grays, so let's, let's pick a gray. I'm going to double click on here, and instead I'm going to choose something in between, like a gray. And what it does is it's almost like a transparency. So that's what I'm going to be kind of working with right now to show you some techniques you can use this for. Let's just, uh, we'll delete that. And so here's, so what I'm going to do first, let's do a recolor. And this, again, this is not going to be the most beautiful thing, but I'm going to hit D and that brings my foreground and background back to black and white. So now I'm going to recolor. So I'll do under here, adjustments recolor. And I'm just going to choose this bluish color. Now, anything you do, I'm going to put that mask, let's, we're hiding these originals. I'm going to be working on this layer right here. So let's put that mask on that layer. So if any color or any adjustment you do, you can put a mask on the actual adjustment. So here, if I put this mask and if I do con uh, control or command I, I'm painting that mask completely black and you could see it right here. So none of that blue color shows. So when I take a paintbrush and I paint in white, it brings the blue back, just like that. So I can paint this whole thing the same color blue if I want. But what if I don't want it all exactly the same color blue? Maybe I feel like maybe the buildings are a little too strong. Well, then what I could do is I'm going to double click and get a new color. I could pick a shade of gray let's say like that and as I start painting you see what's happening it's still blue but it's not as blue like if I want to go stronger I can go closer toward the white you see here so I'm getting myself more blue as I as I go closer to the white and like say in the back, say back here, I wanted that to be really blue. I can go all the way white and just paint that really the full blue of the colors that were originally in there. Uh, say in the front, maybe I want the sidewalk to be less blue. So I'm going to go closer to the black and lower my, uh, shrink my brush a little. I'm hitting my left bracket. And now well, I think I want a little bit more white than that. So, so it still has a little bit of blue in it, but it's not the full blue. So it'll, uh, when you paint with gray, 
it allows you to play with the mask. It doesn't have to be just black or just white. It gives you some uh, really good ideas. For example, um, if we go black and we paint on the sky, remember we're on that we're on that adjustment now. That's where the mask is. So we paint on the sky. Whoops, I'm gonna undo that. We're losing all of the blue. But if we go back to a different color, closer to white, we're getting back the blue. So that's one thing you could do. Now let's maybe we're gonna take this girl in here. That's this woman right here. And what if we wanted her to kind of have a ghostly effect? So maybe I would change her to a black and white just to see what that would look like. And let's leave her at that. And now I would put a mask on her, not the black and white. I would put a mask on her. In fact, I want to bring that mask above the, the second mask here. So that, but that's a mask and that's a mask for her. So now if I start painting that mask, once again, I could paint in, if I painted in, let me do black and white first to show you. If I painted in white, nothing would happen to that mask because when you paint white, you're making everything show through. If I painted black, she would completely disappear. But if I chose some kind of a gray, she becomes more of a ghostly person, just like that. And let's see, maybe do I want it more, more of her to show, more of her to disappear down here? Or hey, say if I get a close up, what if I wanted her face not to be so ghostly? Well, then what I could do is I'm painting in white and I'm bringing her face back and I think it's too much, but let's take a little bit more there. So it gives you really a lot of options. Like I can maybe start shading down here a little darker and then make her fade. Or I can maybe keep her dress completely not disappearing and only have her the ghostly part. And that the way I would have to do that is I'd have to go toward white and paint her dress, which I don't think I'm going to like, but you, but you could see what I'm talking about. And so I can paint her dress black in because it's white and leave her ghostly because there's shades of gray, but I don't really like that. So I'm gonna go back to making her a little bit more uh, like ghostly. Now I did try something and it did not work. For example, I thought, wouldn't this be cool if I could put an outer glow on her? So I did try that. And so what I did here is I said outer glow, but what happens is because she's see-through, that glow shows uh, also behind her. So I didn't like that. So I thought, how can I do this? And let me see if this is going to work because I don't know. So I'm going to duplicate her, control the command J. I'm going to choose the one below her and I am going to delete the mask below her. Let's just, I'm just going to show you her. So I am going to delete the mask and I'm having so many problems choosing things right now. I apologize. I switched to Big Sur and the new version of Affinity and sometimes I have to click three times on the layers. So be careful before you do that, you make that switch. Um, okay, so here I am. If I go to effects here and I give it an outer glow like that, maybe really intense i don't know uh actually let's do real intense but bring down the opacity like kind of like that and eh, maybe too much let's do the radius a little softer just i just want a little outer glow and it's this and i can even do well no i don't want to do an inner let's just do outer glow but now i can take the fill opacity and make that disappear and you can see, let's try it with the inner glow also. If I can get that to work and take the opacity down. So you could see that there is a glow there. And now if I turn her on, it doesn't affect her. She does have an outer glow and you can work around that and you can play with that. You know, I'm, this, I'm just doing this very quickly. I'm trying to show that 
you don't need to just use black and white on masks. Uh, on a mask, you can do any shade of gray, which changes the opacity in parts of the mask, which can be really interesting. Say you just had two photos, and uh, one on top of another, and you wanted to blend certain areas into the other areas, but you don't want fully full opacity. Uh, you can just decide where your shades can go, and I think a lot of you can come up with some interesting ideas on how to do this. So I hope you liked this tutorial, and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please click like and subscribe, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.